This um, debate is so poisoned because I think people have seen different mm. iterations over this over the last uh, 20 years. So you talk about the reality, and I think you're right in what is achievable and what isn't, but there's also a political reality. Mm. I mean, you're a national senator, so you're less concerned about the teal seats, but if you do want to get back into power, you need to get some of those seats back. And um, by proffering this reality, it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to do that. How do you get around that? Well, I think, well, yeah, no, Laura, I think the reality is good policy is always good politics. And I think we're interested in actually having a credible pathway to 2050. And we're genuine in that. We've done the research, we've travelled the globe, we've spoken to the experts. And that's what we're going to be taking to the next election. A credible pathway, not for the next election, not for the next five years, but to actually get us to 2050. Because, mm -hmm. you know, renewable projects need to be renewed every two decades. So before we even get to 2050, we're going to have to roll out these wind towers and solar farms yeah. again. We want them to complement from a type of energy production that's going to last us well into this century so that we can maintain our prosperity and our sustainability. And I think yeah. that's the vision we're going to be taking. I put it, can I put this to you that Yes, I understand yeah. uh, that vision. We don't have the detail on nuclear. I'm not asking you that for today. But uh, the conventional mm. wisdom is that to fill that gap, nuclear is going to take quite some time. So the short term, there's not that uh, solution. And now, once again, the major parties, Liberal and Labor, are so far apart on what the solution is and how to get to 2050. You know, that uh, chopping and changing alone is what creates... Uh, such expensive energy and what makes us miss our targets, isn't it? Well, Laura, the reality is when we were in government, we didn't miss our targets. We put forward targets and we met them. And it was, you know, at COP in Dubai, uh, nations all through Europe, America, no one met their target, mm -hmm. right? So let's not beat ourselves up here. Yeah. Um, we've got a really great reputation. I'm more interested in the end game, Laura, and we can play, you know, these fake games as we head towards 2050. But if you're actually serious about getting there, you've got to have serious plans on the table. And will, will it take a little longer to get nuclear power generation up and running? Yes. Uh, we have to remove the moratorium. Are young people excited about this opportunity as solving the climate wars and being part of the solution while keeping the lights on? Yes, they've travelled the globe. Uh, they've been to France. They've been to America, Canada, the UK. They know this isn't a technology to be afraid of. It's actually a technology that's going to help us yeah. with their climate ambition, but also the economic reality, Laura. So, you know, I'm not interested in short-term political wars. Uh, we've actually got to get uh, people trusting that this is a credible plan. Other developed countries like ours have got it on the table and are maximising it, and we need to do the same. All right, we will see. Bridget McKenzie, thanks so much for coming on the show today. I appreciate it. Always, Laura.